Hi everyone, Helen Blunden here. It is time for a new book review. And this time round, I have Jaron Lanier's book called You Are Not A Gadget, A Manifesto. And for those of you who are thinking, didn't you just review another book of his? Well, yes, you're right. I did review another book of his, which was called 10 Reasons to Delete Your Social Media Accounts Right Now. Now, the thing is, I read that book second, and I read this book first, but I managed to review his second book first over this one. And there's a reason, because I found this one a little bit harder to read that required me to have more focus and more thought and reflection put into this one. What is this book about? This book was written in 2010. So this was before the Facebook Zuckerberg trials. This was before shows like The Social Dilemma. This was before the pandemic. This was before people even knew about Zoom and virtual working and virtual meeting and building businesses online because 2010 that's a long time ago and what we know now of social media is completely different to what we did know back then or what we assumed we knew back then so i found this book a little bit hard going simply because in 2010 he was speculating he was assuming what could happen or what was happening right at the start. What we now know many years later is that he's absolutely right. We're seeing it right in front of our eyes and we're basically in it right at the moment. You Are Not A Gadget is split into various parts, but you know how sometimes you can tell a book simply by looking at the contents and going, you can get the gist of it. But this one, I couldn't get the gist of it. Okay, for example, what is a person, what will money be, the unbearable thinness of flatness, making the best of bits, and future humours. So you couldn't get the gist of this manifesto, where was it going and what was he talking about? I also found it difficult simply because some of the terms that are used in here, like bachelordian, neoteny, I thought, what's going on? What's he talking about? What I had to do was take a step back from this book and actually go go to his videos online and there are many where he talks about the concepts in this book and he talks about it in generalities and he provides metaphors he provides examples and there is an underlying message so when i read the how to delete 10 social media accounts everything came falling into place so then this made more sense to me and I continued reading it. And in the end, I thought, right, okay, I get what he's trying to say. Just back then in 2010, maybe the, the message was a little bit too early. Maybe it was unformulated in some way, simply because I found at times he was going on tangents. But I like tangents. I like things that take me down uh, different routes and different ways it gets me to to learn and explore just like I did with this one I had to kind of take a step back look at other videos and other uh, works of his and what he, sh he was sharing online to understand the gist read some other books of his to understand the gist before going back to this one now Jaron Lanier is a computer science he's a philosopher he's uh he's a he's an intellectual and he's also the guru they call him a guru of virtual reality so he pioneered virtual reality and i must admit this is something that kind of didn't sit well with me and i didn't know if it was part of my own judgment or my own ignorance because i kept thinking and look i have virtual reality at home i go under in the playstation vr world at times i thought to myself isn't someone who's espousing the virtues of virtual reality actually disconnecting from others as well because you're immersing yourself into a fake environment and being put through different situations in a fake environment so therefore how can you espouse humanity and connection with humans if you yourself are in a fake environment probably in an avatar format you might drift and so at times that's why part of me always kind of prevented myself from reading his stuff because I thought these message of virtual reality 
and the humanity and use of technology was at disconnect with my own thinking. But I'm glad I read his books. I, and I read them too late, I think. I read them when I was already going through this process of thinking about how to get a little bit of myself back. And this is something that he mentioned in this book. He calls it personhood. And he basically says in this book that we need to formulate our own personhood. We need to kind of know and understand ourselves before we start to share online. And I've mentioned it in other reviews, and he also talks about it in here, that social media is basically bad, not because of the tools themselves, not because of the people, but because of the advertisers and the marketers who grab all our information and our data, who then kind of use it back to us so they could find new markets to sell to. And so that's why it's bad. Another reason why it's bad is social media allows a pack mentality. And he mentions this in his, in his second book about the social media deletion. And this pack mentality doesn't allow people to kind of explore their thinking and to reflect a little bit more on what it is that they're doing and how they're doing it. Um, and instead, it just serves up little components or productized, commoditized little chunks of information that has no reference or context to the rest of the information. In this book, he talks about Wikipedia as being kind of like, you know, the mishmash of all this information that is served to us. And as we consume the mishmash, we're denying ourselves the opportunity to think for ourselves, the opportunity to question for ourselves, and the opportunity to have our knowledge work for ourselves and that we get paid for ourselves. He has a big gripe against uh, file sharing about openness. And again, this is something that kind of goes against me because my initial thinking was all about being open and working out loud and showing and sharing your work. But what I'm quickly noticing over the years, I have noticed over the years, is that when you do that, you're actually denying yourself an opportunity to get paid for the stuff that you show value um, to. So you have to, what happens is then technology then locks you in certain products or certain things. And it's really interesting reading it now because I'm seeing everything with fresh new eyes. In a, in a recent article I read about Google trawling through blog. And now as you write a question on Google, it gives you some answers with some one, two, three, four, five. So it actually presents a very summarized version. And what it does, it trawls through blogs and grabs bits and pieces and then serves it up to you as ink. And you think that you're getting an article. It looks like an article. It looks like it's coming from somewhere valuable, but no, it's coming from a Google bot that just grabs onto different blog sites to get answers. And so I don't see that as a good thing at all because it's preventing us to really think for ourselves. And this is the kind of stuff he mentions in this book. It's really forward thinking. If I have to sit and think about this book, yes, I found it hard to read, but if I think about it, it was written in 2010. So he was preempting a lot of what he was seeing and what he was assuming, and we are actually experiencing it right now. So I would say this is a forward thinking book. It might be written in, in a difficult manner. I would say that if you check out his other stuff, YouTube and other places, you'll get the gist of what the message is about. I'm thinking, well, why did I leave it too late for me to finally delete my social media accounts? I don't know, it just came to this point. But don't think that just because I read his books, I deleted my social media accounts. No, this has been, for me, brewing in the background. So look, this is a good book. It is a book that makes you think. It is a book that is forward thinking. But I would say just kind of hold that in mind that it was written in 2010. So there are some terms in here that are a bit new. He does go on different paths as well. I would still highly recommend this book 
If a book challenges you to think if it's a little bit difficult, I would say one of the ways what I do is I take a break from it and then I explore the other work of the person who wrote the book just to understand what their line of thinking is, what they're trying to explain, what kind of works are they putting out there so you can understand their philosophy. Once you understand their philosophy and the gist of what they're trying to say, then you can go back to the book, then you can read it with new eyes, then you can make your own judgment value from it and share that. Maybe, but not on social media. Write a blog. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. That's it for now. If you've read any of Jaron Lanier's books, please let me know. I'm thinking of reading his virtual reality book. I really want to delve more into what he writes about that and hopefully kind of shape my thinking around the VR stuff because that's another thing that is making me a bit irky, especially when it comes to work environments like the metaverse. I've got my own thoughts on that, but I'll probably leave that for another time. Okay then, thanks for listening and thanks for watching. Bye for now.